Abhishek, thank you so much for accepting our invitation and joining this call. Um, very, very excited to have you. Um, I find that um, talking to, and I don't want to sound very cliche by saying talking to younger people, but talking to younger people has personally, at a very personal level for me, has enhanced my learning cycles significantly. Um, because the way people like me now think is you are the consumer of the future. You are the producer of the future. And the, the business needs to look at both of those angles from your lens um, because you are the new decision maker. So, so that's what's exciting about this. Thanks, um, thanks for that. Thank you. My pleasure. So what we'd like to do in these, in these conversations is we start with exploring the story behind what you do. And the way we do that is we go a little bit in the past first, understand choices you made, why, how, what got you here. Then we talk about what is it that you're doing, what, what keeps you up, what makes you click, think, tick, and then we go to the future. So, yeah, so why don't you start with giving us background as to uh, you know, where you grew up, how you grew up. Just tell us a story about how you got to where you are today. Wonderful. Yeah. So, well, I, I, I'm based in Jaipur right now. So we have our own setup here in Jaipur. So I grew up in Jaipur, uh, even though my family, uh, my grandfather, everybody belongs to a small town near Churu, you can say up, up north uh, towards the desert side of Rajasthan. It's a small town called Rajgarh. Okay. So my was there, my, my, my grandfather was there. So uh, he, my grandfather was actually uh, a very renowned uh, Vedya. So he's from the background, but he was also a very good writer. So he's also kind of, I can say, the president's awardee in 1986, I think so, wow. for, for, for uh, writing literature in Rajasthani language. So um, uh, around seven years, my, uh, my father had moved uh, before, before he got married. So he was in Jaipur for his studies and everything. And then my whole family uh, has been in Jaipur since then. Uh, so yeah, I grew up in Jaipur, uh, did my schooling here, uh, then went on to do uh, as every other kid from my generation was doing, went on to do my engineering uh, from LNM IIT, uh, which, which is a college quite close to Jaipur itself. Uh, but then I, while I was completing my engineering, uh, which was in the field of IT and communications, um, I kind of... Uh, Realized that this was not this was not something I really wanted to do. Uh, there's a funny story attached to it. So I was sitting for an interview with TCS. Okay. So, <laughs> so then that was a campus placement, and I was being asked. So so a, a basic question: uh, Where do you see yourself in five years from now? So we had gone not here. <laughs> not prepared that okay, I have to answer this and that and this and that. And I was like sitting there, uh, probably doing my own business. Was my answer. And then the guy was like, "Then why are you sitting?" You man, <laughs> reject. <laughs> so that right. was my reject uh, on campus. But I think so. Uh, I was happy. Uh, I, I was not going down that road at that moment. Uh, and then I decided to do something, uh, something different. So I switched gears and I, I went for my uh, master's in management. Uh, uh, I came to UK actually. Uh, I was uh, studying uh, master's in management from Warwick University. Okay, lovely. Uh, college very good uh, very good uh, professors out there learned a lot uh, a very different environment of uh, education there compared to the university education that we got here um, stayed on to uh, work at Ernst Young for a few years there in London and then uh, uh, I remember it was 2014 when uh, my visa my work visa was kind of expiring and I had to renew it so my my manager was asking me that uh, go and renew your visa. But then by the time there was a background story happening uh, uh, in the sense that me, my father and my uncle uh, who, who used to live in uh, Switzerland, uh, we were kind of uh, thinking of doing something uh, in, in the field of dairy. Uh, okay. And I will elaborate that on that, uh, <laughs> on that particular point. But uh, I think so 2014, my visa renewal became the point when I was like, should I do it or should I go back? Uh, and right. then I think so, uh, the gut feel said that, okay, no, I think so it is time to go back because if I stayed another two or three years, then probably I would be back in the 
loop of staying there and probably not make the plunge, take the plunge of uh, coming to uh, India back again. So even though, though there was no pressure uh, from my family, but yeah, I was like, it was me and my wife, we decided that no, let's go back. Let's do something exciting. And that is when uh, we came back in 2014. Uh, and then we kind of researched a lot, uh, went around India, a lot of factories to see around what is happening in the dairy industry, how they're working, uh, had support of a lot of people uh, in the industry to take us around. Uh, and then we finally went ahead and kind of established Rufil uh, and decided that, yes, this is something which looks interesting, which looks exciting. Uh, right. A lot can happen uh, in this industry. So yeah, that's how that's how we ended up uh, at Rufil uh, in Jaipur. So, so the question is, why dairy? What about dairy? I mean, you were in UK, you were working as a strategy consultant. You could have done millions of things. Yeah. yeah. Why did they? Yeah, you know, uh, I think so. There were th- th- there are a few reasons. Uh, first off, of course, uh, uh, back in 2007 or 8, uh, my father had taken like a small piece of land to start his own small dairy farm um, in 2008, probably 20 or 30 cows. So uh, my father got interested into this more and more as he kind of... Uh, uh, started getting involved in the whole thing. Uh, keep hearing his stories about wh- why we are doing this and how is it helping us and getting the right, the most pure things that we should be eating and drinking. Nice. So uh, that's how it started. Uh, and then gradually uh, the farm became bigger because once, so our friends, our neighbors got to know that we are doing something like this. So they were also interested in kind of like having the same milk that we were having and so it was like, yeah, why not uh, have some more cows? And gradually, 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 we came up to like, I don't know, maybe 200, 250 cows by uh, 2014. Uh, so there was always this uh, affinity towards dairy and maybe some sure. comfort there. On, on the other side, so while I was in UK, uh, I used to uh, travel to Switzerland a lot. So of course, UK, uh, uh, I was there for almost five years. So in terms of in terms of the dairy products that you get in UK, of course, is it's a much larger uh, bouquet of products that is available there from what we were having in India. Um, but when I used to go to Switzerland, it was probably double that of UK, right? So, right. <laughs> uh, so you would have so my my uncle would uh, sit down on every Sunday breakfast and he would bring us like uh, twenty different types of cheese, uh, ten types of yogurts, this yeah. and that. So even though uh, I was not the biggest fan of eating or drinking, uh, and I, I was very lanky at that time, so uh, uh, you, you still, still are. <laughs> <laughs> I keep getting that yes, uh, but at that time, uh, so he used to lo- he used to love feeding us uh, uh, so lovingly. Uh, and when you have products like uh, like some very tasty yogurt, some very tasty kefir, uh, quarks. Um, um, I used to be very fascinated about all those products that, I mean, very, very, sure. very nice products. So uh, uh, there was always this thing that why don't we get such things in India? I don't know why. Correct. Uh, Correct. Uh, at that time, there were no, there was no uh, Epigamia or there was no Nestle or there was no Amul yogurts that was coming uh, in sure. the market. So I was, I was really wondering why don't we have something like this in India because this suits my taste palette. And, yeah. Uh, so why, why don't we have something like this in India? Of course, we have Shrikhand, uh, but sure. that was one single flavor, right? Shrikhand. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Flavor. While I was working with EY, I was like kind of good with numbers, uh, building Excel models and this and that. So I used to always love seeing how the businesses are uh, playing with different strategies and sure. pricing strategies and marketing strategies and this and that. Uh, I always had this uh, feeling in my mind that at some point, of course, I want to do, wanted to do something of my own. Uh, uh, I wasn't sure of what it was, but all these things kind of uh, came together in 2013, 14 kind of time period. And then uh, I was like uh, speaking with my father and my uncle, uh, can, can we do something uh, in the dairy sector? Because we know how, how, how that industry from the procurement side works because we have yeah. our own data. Um, so at that time I was not like, okay, we'll procure milk from uh, 10 different centers. I was like, okay, maybe we'll start something with our own farm, we'll pack this, we'll make this, this and that, start off really small. Uh, and then my, my uncle got involved and then he was like, yes, uh, we could do something like this. There are lots of products you can. So he got excited that, okay, there are so many products you can make in uh, in India. There is nothing right. like 
there is there are quality challenges so why don't we do this that this and that so and that's how by by the end of 2014 uh, uh when my visa was expiring so it's like i think so this is a sign <laughs> that i'm getting uh probably it is time to uh, go back and explore more what we can do in this industry and that's how that's how uh, i think so we ended up uh, me and my wife we both decided to leave our jobs and we came back uh, uh to jaipur and then uh, the journey started yes uh, we we went around a lot of uh, places we we went around and spoke to a lot of people that how this industry is working and and it was very fascinating because uh, a of course there were a lot of cooperatives which were which are operating yeah. which were operating even back then um uh, and they were really really strong and then there were a uh, lot uh, of private players having like a different uh, strategy or different product portfolio so uh, we spoke a lot of we spoke to a lot of people so when we came we thought that we will be focusing on uh, yogurts we'll just be making yogurts right uh, but then of course as as kind of uh, we spoke to a lot of people we realized that uh, maybe by going with just one single product might not be the best thing because uh, uh, there is no market for this there's a market for uh, the people don't know the yogurts this and that so uh, i i think so then we somehow realize okay if we want to do something uh, if we have the capability to do it let us start not very big but we will go with the full bouquet of products uh, and then we'll keep adding the things that we uh, want to uh, in the overall portfolio so that's i'm sure there, there are there are a couple of things that uh, are deeply intriguing in in what you are saying um the first thing that is intriguing is something that i have personally held and the more i've developed in the dairy markets i have held this belief that you know the one thing that is very common between um ethnic diets india and the west caucasian diet is our protein source is dairy yeah, yeah. um the difference is and you 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 alluded to that very elegantly is india we drink protein in the west we eat protein mm-hmm. like cheese like cheese yeah. is a big big it's the same thing it's milk presented to you in a very different form mm-hmm. and you actually had the uh, intellect and the drive to take that curiosity one step further which is you know my first visit to a grocery store in 1997 safe in arizona which is where i landed was they're selling yogurt mm-hmm. right i mean that was a big shock because you know back in india the only yogurt that was sold was in bengal back to you know uh, mishti the the sweet dahi right oh. other than that you never went to the shop to buy yogurt yeah. right and, yeah. and then i'm like oh so other than milk they sell so much more why don't we do that in india because we consume so much yogurt uh, milk so the only other form that i could think of in india that we sell dairy is is sweets right either we sell milk or we sell sweets there is no ground in the middle true but that was 20 years ago it's very different now so 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 that's so help me understand what was your how did you you know unravel or solve this because it takes two things one is you having a vision hey if this is possible in a market i should be able to replicate this in this market in your market in india right now of course there is some there are the hurdles and things like that that happens every time but you have a vision so help me understand how did you how did you make that connection you just said you were sitting with your uncle at breakfast having this variety bouquet of product and then you're like oh, why don't we have this in india so what did you find out why don't we have this in india Well, uh, so so when when we came back and while we were uh, studying this this mm-hmm. this thing, why don't yeah. we have a, a simple product like a yogurt back yeah. in India? Well, it's Correct. not like not like technically difficult to make a yogurt. Uh, of course, you need the right uh, the right processes and the right. Uh, of course, equipment. but but I think largely what I found uh, through my own research, and I, I still strongly believe that India has largely been the Indian dairy industry has largely been driven. by cooperatives uh where the where the i think so the main objective of the cooperatives the state cooperatives was to uh ensure the availability of drinking milk correct for, 
same number of population, right? So uh, since it has been like that, so I don't think uh, uh, the Indian private dairy sector had enough footing to expand like in the 70s or 80s or 90s. So, so the stage that we are in now, uh, of course, now there are lo lots of uh, private private dairies, private brands, and uh, they are they are kind of the ones who are of doing a lot of innovation in the products, uh, in the dairy beverages, in the dairy different uh, segments. You can say, uh, uh, I think so. Uh, Ten years back, it was it was very little, and even if the private industry, private players were coming, uh, the main focus was always uh, milk uh, because. That used that probably gets you the uh, the volume and the value in the business. Yeah. Even there's very low margin, of course, but uh, sure. you see that there is there is potential there, and then uh, and then uh, that nobody else is doing that. So why should I do it? Uh, kind of the kind of the circle that was going on probably. Uh, now, of course, uh, a few even the few state cooperatives have taken the lead. Now, of course, uh, they have kind of started expanding their. Uh, product portfolio but when when i was researching i could i could find a lot of charge the heat yeah you could clean the heat but in different sizes and packets sure. uh, uh, uh lassi maybe uh, uh, or maybe some yeah. sometimes flavored lassi <laughs> but that was about it so even back in like, i think so the, even the cheese market in india has literally grown in the last 7 to 10 years toward toward the, toward the pace it is picking now sure. uh, even even <laughs> 10 to 10 years back, cheese was also not one of the products. So I mean, I think, basically paneer, right? I mean, paneer was the yeah. only form. But then paneer, but, but the paneer, I think the problem with paneer is that uh, loose paneer is so widely available. So okay. for when I was researching uh, uh, in terms of uh, the organized players, so paneer uh, was there, of course, but uh, I think so it was not as big as it is, of course, now. And uh, if you look at the overall paneer market, of course, it is massive. But you would always find the loose uh, paneer being the dominant player or the dominant uh, 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 seg segment that uh, loose player uh, loose players are involved in. So uh, these few things, of course, then you have ghee, which is like the byproduct, and all those things is yeah. different. Um, but yeah, I I, I think uh, uh, the value added segment was uh, very very low in that sense, uh, and a lot of a lot of it can be done now. I still I'm of a firm belief that there is so much, uh, uh, so many things you can do in the value added segment, not in just terms of uh, uh, what kind of product, but how can you deliver nutrition? Uh, how can you actually address sometimes uh, uh, the problems of the definition deficiencies, as you said yourself, in terms of protein? So yeah. how do you deliver more protein through, uh, through dairy? Uh, so of course, there is a baseline, uh, what you will get with every product, every dairy product, uh, in terms of the protein content, but, uh, there is a possibility of adding more value in that sense, uh, uh in terms of protein or any other kind of nutrition that we can. Sure. Give. So, so I think, so yeah, there is, there is huge opportunity in that sense. Uh, Abhishek, I think the, uh, I mean, I'm going to pick on the last word you just said opportunity. I mean, India has a billion people. Of course, that is opportunity, right? I mean, uh, in a billion people, you have every price point available, affordability point available, and you have a distribution of taste that you can cater to, right? I would even go ahead and argue, albeit theoretically, that geographical size I mean, when you are sitting in India, you know, for you, you think India is big. India is one seventh the size of the U.S. So from a time and distance, logistics is a problem. We're not arguing that. What I'm saying is time and distance is, is a manageable time and distance. Logistics is what makes it difficult, right? I mean, can you get your product from Jaipur to Delhi? I would argue that the unknowns in getting a truck from Jaipur to Delhi is much higher than the unknowns that we have from getting a truck from New York to San Francisco, let's say, which mm -hmm. is, you know, 5,000 kilometers. So I think that is a grunt. I'm not arguing that. But what I'm saying is, you know, it's a, it's a tight country uh, and you have a billion, you know, people. So opportunity is no doubt. But having said that, there is what I want to then ask you next, and we'll get to capital last, but the part in the middle is, so what are the hurdles that you, because what you are saying cannot happen without people telling you, no, no, that's a dumb idea. 
So, so talk us through that. What made you get over those hurdles? What were the hurdles and what made you get over those hurdles? So I, so I would say when we started off, uh, a lot of people, as you said, uh, when we talked about yogurts, that uh, why we are doing this. So like an excited kid, I always say, oh no, yes, we think this is going to be a great, yeah, yeah. Uh, we want to make this. Some some of them would uh, encourage us, okay, yes, this, this sounds good, but you should probably also cover your bases with a few different products. Some sure. of them to say and guide us that, no, 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 this is the dumbest idea. <laughs> Don't even get into <laughs> Dairy is bad. Uh, uh, we have lost money uh, uh, working in the dairy segment. Um, so yeah, th- th- there were lots of different opinions we were we were listening to. Um, I think so. When we then when we when we decided to actually build the factory, uh, we said that okay, uh, we will we will go slightly slower in that sense. We won't like kind of build a massive factory and the whole setup. So it won't be as small as just running a factory or small unit in the dairy farm. Uh, so we would, of course, uh, try to collect milk from different sources, which is which is going to match the standards of the milk that we want. Uh, uh, but then it was it was not something that we wanted to do like straight away go with a massive setup. So we said that okay, we'll go with a decent size setup. Uh, the the big challenge then that came was in terms of the procurement. So right. Rajasthan, of course, is uh, uh, a highly producing state. I think so. It's probably number one or number two uh, in terms of uh, the volume of milk that is uh, generated in in Rajasthan. Uh, but again, because and I think so, it goes for almost every state. Let me check just just for one second. You know, we have a lot of people who listen uh, to us in 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 uh, in the West. So just for their context, this is a fascinating point that Rajasthan is the number one or number two pretty milk producing state because it's also the desert of India, yeah. right? I mean, there's not a lot of water. Uh, the Rajasthan we grew up, um, or at least I grew up, fascinating about, fantasizing about, and romanticizing about was it's basically a desert state. So a <laughs> desert state is India's largest, second largest, doesn't matter, in the top five milk producing states, which is, a, which is an accomplishment in itself, right? It's a huge accomplishment. Anyway, I- yes. I think the one reason why it is is because uh, 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 for agriculture the water is less. That is why every soul has like two or three cows or, or buffaloes. So uh, so much so so in terms of the number of cattle that we have here is very high. Uh, so it is very unorganized, of course. Uh, so you don't have even 10, 10, 10 cows or buffaloes is is, is something uh, not very common. So. Uh, but overall, in terms of the overall production, uh, it is one of the highest, of course, yes. Um, so yeah, so so um, uh, the problem that we kind of faced was that uh, one of the biggest procur- procurers of milk in Rajasthan was the state cooperative here. Uh, it still is, Saras. So uh, Rajasthan milk is one of the highest cost milk in, in the country, I would say. Uh, one of the reasons probably is because uh, the nearby states uh, kind of take the milk from here. A lot of milk is being uh, diverted. exported. Exported. The United States, uh, yeah. you can say. So, so the milk from Rajasthan is always is very in, is is in very high demand. So, Delhi is is a huge consumption uh, by Rajasthan. So, a lot of milk goes there to the factories around Delhi. Uh, uh, even Madhya Pradesh. Uh, it's probably milk de- deficit state, so a lot of milk is going there. Uh, maybe even to Haryana. So uh, from what we from what we realized was that, um, uh, and at at a very later stage was that <laughs> the milk is very expensive in Rajasthan, right? Uh, uh, and uh, of course, it has it follows the cycles of the uh, during the summers it goes very high. During the winters, yes. you have uh, excess milk. All that happens, but. Within that cycle, uh, the Rajasthan cycle is uh, towards the costly side. So that was one challenge. And on, on, on top of that, uh, since we were a new entrance, of course, we had to kind of convince the farmers that we are here to stay because the farmer psychology works very differently. Oh, last year, somebody came, collected milk from us. Three months down the line, they were not here. So why should we trust you? So that Correct. kind of... So, yeah. so to, 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 to build that trust with the farmer uh, was, was, I think, so... In and my, it takes a few cycles, I suppose. It's not just one cycle. It's not just one cycle. It has taken us uh, a very long time. Yeah. Uh, and I used to get personally involved 
for the first couple or three years actually uh, uh, to actually meet with every single farmer that we were trying to uh, add in the system. So, uh, uh, so we had a whole team. So we used to go out there and try to explain them uh, what we are trying to do. <coughs> of course, there was uh, some commercial angle also that uh, everyone would expect that uh, okay, if if uh, Saras or or the major players in Rajasthan are at this price point, uh, sure. what be the price point that yeah. what what was the incentive that we should switch to you? So, so to while while we were building this trust, but uh, uh, there was always a cost pressure on us in sure. terms of procurement. Uh, yeah. Adding to that, I think so. We had set a very uh, uh, a very high benchmark for for ourselves in terms of. Uh, the quality of milk that we were going to collect. So since milk is abundantly available, uh, we could have asked a lot of vendors to supply us milk, uh, but we did not go down that route. So uh, we said that we'll be collecting our own milk from our own center. So we had to kind of set up our own centers with like, uh, uh, and on the BMC model. So it's like the bulk milk cooler model. So okay. it, was not, it was not on the milk chilling center where you have uh, a, lot of, uh, <coughs> a lot of milk coming at one point uh, in the morning, and then you are chilling it instantly. Uh, but we were collecting milk uh, from where the farms were. So we were putting like 2000 liters, 3000 liter uh, tanks near the uh, milk zone, and then collecting, appointing one facilitator, and then he was collecting all the milk for us. So, right. so down that route, uh, uh, which was slightly capital intensive, but I think so that helped us in getting a very good quality milk. Uh, uh, because we were planning to go to fermented products. So that was one thing which we wanted to make sure that the quality of milk, the bacterial, the initial bacterial load is not that high. So all those things uh, uh, we, we kind of made sure through the BMC model. So uh, uh, this procurement, uh, even though we were sitting uh, in a high milk producing state, it still was uh, very challenging uh, and con- the farmers and building that trust. Which I'm happy to say now, of course, we have a network of about 1,000, 1,200 farmers um, uh, giving us milk on an everyday basis. We have about 15 to 16 centers now. So uh, from the first center in uh, 2017, I think so. Yes, August 2017, uh, we have now grown to 15, 16 centers. Of course, last couple of years have been kind of dampening. So uh, the pace has been a bit slow, both in terms of increasing the procurement or increasing the sales. But uh, in general, yes, it has been a good journey after that, after that initial realization that, oh, even if you are sitting in a high, high milk producing state, still the procurement is not the biggest uh, challenge for you. So that was one thing. That was one thing uh, which is kind of, I, I feel that was one of the biggest challenges uh, in terms of procurement. Uh, I think so the second, the other challenge I would say uh, was, uh, Jaipur as a market is a big challenge for us. Uh, we we have a lot of kind of sale uh, uh, in the in the upcountry market, as we say. Sure. Um, but again, uh, Jaipur being heavily dominated by a, a state cooperative. Sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, it is unfortunate right now that uh, uh, even like every industry is being opened up for the private sector in 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 general. Uh, but in dairy, I think so. What, one of the big challenges uh, uh, that that we face is that there is still a lot of uh, you can say an extra cushion for the state cooperatives, right? Sure. So yeah, yeah. If I want to sell out <clears throat> in the general retail market, so I have to go to the mom and pop store where I can keep my products. Um, but uh, when you have milk available at every uh, nook and corner of your area of your colonies through the booths. So in yeah. India, if you remember, there are Correct. so many, right? So uh, uh, that is only allocated to a certain uh, segment of the uh, state. Yes. So that becomes a challenge. I mean, uh, it's not something new for us or for anybody. Uh, so I, I can't really complain on that. But um, uh, that is that is a tough part in terms of uh, uh, how we manage our sales in 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 especially in uh, uh, bigger cities so like Jaipur or or Ajmer or in Rajasthan, Ajmer, uh, or a few other cities. So uh, these are the couple of challenges we try to always uh, get around with those. Uh, but yeah, uh, how will the business be interesting if there are no challenges? Correct. So <clears throat> we've taken a bunk of your time. So let's sort of get to the wrap up mode, which is so. So where from here? 
Um, I mean, India is a very exciting market for us to study and understand uh, because the demographics in India is very supportive. You have a lot of young people um, and, and upwardly mobile uh, population, uh, economically speaking. However, I also think that India with this demographics, I think, is very unorthodox, right? So orthodox is what orthodoxy is what you and I have been discussing so far. Hey, yogurt, you know, why will yogurt sell and why will this sell? But you've actually turned that model on its head and said, no, no, there's a contemporary consumer in India where uh, they will buy yogurt, uh, they will buy cheese, they will buy things that we haven't done yet, right? I mean, possible. So help us understand how are you looking at, you know, what's in front of you? Well, I think, uh, of course, we started off with milk as one of the products to, yeah. exp- to, to build our base. Uh, but what always uh, excites us, uh, and, and at Rufil, we have a very young team, as in the average age is quite young. So we have lots of interesting ideas keep on yeah. like, popping up. So uh, uh, I think so we are really excited about uh, the value-added products that we are planning or are in the pipeline. So be it yogurts or or. Uh, dairy based beverages so i think uh, whatever i have seen so far with the with the few products that we have been uh, non milk category products that we have been selling uh, yeah. we 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 kind of have received very good feedback very good response uh, not just in terms of how the product is or what the product is but in terms of the acceptance of the product uh, uh, and people are always on the lookout of what new are we going to do now so yeah, so yeah. we by the tagline, so at Rufil, right. we live by the tagline called Zara Hatke. Uh-huh. Uh, Zara Hatke nice. means uh, something different. So yeah. uh, uh, we always try to do something different, and we want to do something different uh, 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 at Rufil. So we are always trying to uh, think of what new products we can do. Uh, and given the response that we are getting, a from uh, from the general market that we are catering to, but also uh, in terms of uh, uh, you, you're seeing a huge shift in terms of uh, the purchase patterns being uh, yeah, new yeah. Patterns coming out. So, uh, so the e-commerce channel. So yeah. we see such a huge traction of uh, such kind of products coming from the e-commerce uh, channels. Uh, modern trade channel is of course growing, and there is always uh, which is which is better, which is not. But uh, I think so. The consumption pattern. Uh, is changing. I can see in front uh, of my eyes. In ter- just in in my three years journey, I've seen that. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so, so even though I have uh, our own personal data points are just for those three years. Sure. Uh, but I think so. Uh, there is a validation of what we are doing in terms of all these of different course. different products. And I think so. Something very exciting is going to happen in terms of the beverage industry because after this lockdown, something has changed in the mindset of people. Yes. Uh, fortunately, fortunately, I can't say, but uh, for some reason, these the the carbonated drinks sector is kind of becoming stagnant, uh, yeah. and the, the daily beverages are kind of uh, increasingly becoming popular. And you can do so much in in the dairy beverage segment in terms of Correct. getting new products, exciting products, delivering nutrition through different modes. So uh, I'm I'm quite excited uh, about. Uh, the step that we took in 2014, 15, uh, I think so. Uh, we are going to see a huge, huge change in terms of how people see dairy, not just in terms of it's it's not going to be just milk and dahi and charge. I think so. There's going to be a lot more in dairy uh, in the next five, seven years, ten years time. Makes sense. Well, thank you so much for making time and speaking with us. What we'd like to do is keep reconnecting with you in this public forum personally we'll definitely reconnect but at this public forum and and learn more from you i mean um i want to write up some notes on what we just chatted fascinating thank you so much for making time thank you so much i know it was wonderful and yes let's uh, reconnect perfect